Hello everyone, welcome back to another lecture. We have lesson four today, the normal distribution. Uh, this is like our graph looks on here. The normal distribution is something that's a graph that starts small, rises to a peak, and goes back to being very small with that peak being exactly at 50%. And there are many, many things that follow this normal distribution. Uh, and even if something does not follow it exactly, we can make a lot of assumptions um, to get very accurate estimations using this normal distribution. Um, so we are going to talk about when we roll dice, um, kind of the statistics of what that looks like and how it approaches a normal distribution and uh, how to eventually use it with z-scores in the next lesson. So a normal curve or a normal distribution is, is data that makes this curve when you make a histogram or a graph of it, essentially. Um, when we have a smooth line like this, you can essentially look at each tiny point as a point on a histogram. Uh, so there are some other common shapes. Um, let's talk about these four. Uh, describe each shape. Um, let's go. So A is, we call that normal or a mound. So this purple one is what we're going to call A. It's not labeled for you, but the purple one will be A. Um, and that is a normal distribution. And sometimes or used to be called a mound because that's what it looks like. There are small numbers on the sides, large numbers in the middle. Um, you could say that a normal distribution would, could represent the amount of time that students in a music class practice, right? Uh, some people practice a lot, some people practice very little. A lot of people probably practice uh, in the middle and uh, somewhere around 50% uh, of time would be the highest point approximately. Um, for B or for the red graph, uh, it's not called red, I guess. It's uh, the one on the right, is there a point on here? This one, this one. So mound is this one, this one is the red one. It is a skewed graph. Uh, it is one peak with a tail at the end, essentially kind of a mound, but shifted over, so it only has one tail. Uh, and you could say that, you know, quiz marks might follow this. Most of you do pretty well. You know, you do get between 70, and 90, some over, some a little bit less than that, and then there are a few uh, that don't do as well. Uh, that is in every single class. So a quiz, I don't know why I wrote tail, quiz marks, quiz marks might follow this distribution. Uh, the blue one is something we call bimodal. So that's this one down here, bottom left, bimodal, it's got two peaks um, and it might be something like the number of texts sent by people in class. Um, by class. So um, people might send none. Then there's probably a lot of you that send like one or two, you know, in the class. Uh, it might go down as people might not send, you know, anywhere between three and 10 might be uncommon, but there's probably more people that send 15, 20 or more, and you might get two peaks um, of text and people in class. It might be a different distribution, but that is one way that you could explain this shape. Uh, the last one that we have, the yellow one, the bottom right, uh, we're gonna call that one D, that's uniform. And there are no peaks and no valleys. And we could say that this one might be uh, the distance that people walk to school. So some people walk from a close distance in town, but some people walk a medium distance, some people walk a long distance, um, and it's probably similar. Um, the amount of people that walk, maybe, maybe a little bit, the people that are closer might walk a little bit more, but you could foresee uh, you know, people that are more than a couple blocks away, it being a uniform distribution, people that are walking to school, um, the distances that they're walking. So let's talk about dice. Um, there's a cool um, place you can go to GeoGebra and actually roll these dice. Um, 
but we are just going to talk about it theoretically. So I guess we have a new A. I'll tear this off so we don't get confused. We have A. Uh, if you rolled a single dice 50,000 times, what does the graph look like? And I encourage you to go here, but I uh, will just tell you, I don't really have the capabilities at the moment to show you. Uh, you have a single dice. It is equally likely to land on the number one as it is two, as it is three, four, five, and six. All of those possibilities are equally likely. So if you rolled a single die 50,000 times, the graph most likely would be uniform. Maybe there would be a few blips, but 50,000 times would give you a pretty even cut across. Um, we expect it to be uniform as one to six are equally likely. Right? One, one and two and three and four and five and six are all equally likely to be rolled. It means that um, the graph should be uniform. This changes, however, if you roll two dice. Because if you roll two dice, you are more likely to have a number that is in the middle. Uh, I believe seven and eight are seven, eight, nine. Oh my goodness. There's a couple of numbers in the middle that are the most common because there are the most ways to make it. Uh, you could make seven through one and six, two and five, three and four, or the opposite way for each dice. Um, eight could be made several ways, fours, three and five, um, two and six. So there are lots of possibilities to make these numbers and there's less possibilities to make the lower and higher numbers. For example, two only has one way to make it if you get snake eyes. Or 12 only has one way to make it if you get two sixes. Um, three has less possibilities. You could have a two and a one or a one and a two. So it's a little bit more likely. Uh, essentially, the graph ends up looking like a normal distribution with, you know, um, what do we have? Two to 12 are our possibilities. So there's 11 different histograms in here. But it comes out looking like an approximately normal distribution. Uh, it may, because it's so small, it may look more kind of like a peak like that. But as you get more values, it will look more and more like this. Um, I think we have, ah, let's see, if you rolled two die 50 times, what does the graph look like? And I encourage you to try this on GeoGebra or with someone, but, um, if you only roll it 50 times, your graph is probably going to look kind of ridiculous. I seriously doubt there's going to be much of a pattern. You might have a little bit of a normal distribution, but you might have a whole section like nine might be missing. And the reason is that 50 times is a very low sample. It's a very low sample size. 50 times is a very low sample size compared to 50,000. Uh, as you have a higher sample size, you get closer to what it actually looks like. If you heard in the Moneyball movie, um, there was a point where he said, uh, sample size is too small to make any conclusions. And that's what he's talking about. 50 times is not enough. You need to do it 50,000 times. Um, so make a conjecture for D. Oh, no, we have a different one. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Ah, uh, yes, so D is make a conjecture about what the graph uh, will look like if you rolled the dice, three dice, 50,000 times. So we have E. We have uh, three dice. We are going up to a possibility of 18, but our lowest is three. So it's going to be even more spread out. Uh, if you do it 50,000 times, it's going to be symmetrical. And I encourage you to do this on GeoGebra. Uh, it's going to be symmetrical, and it's going to be more smooth but it's probably going to be a normal distribution uh, or approximating it in any case. And question F, or sorry, it's E on, so I've got D on here. Question E is how does the sample size affect our results? Larger sample sizes, uh, larger is better for a sample size. We get closer to the truth, <laughs> if we can call it that. All right, let's use an example here. 
So a snowboard shop opens. I think it's Heidi. No, yeah, Heidi uh, needs to know what board she wants to sell. Uh, so she collects data from a thousand snowboarders, and she wants to know how she can use this data to help her stock her store. So the data is all to the right, and if we were to make this graph, um, we would see that it is a normal distribution. We're talking about the height of snowboarders. You have some very short snowboarders, some very tall snowboarders, but most people are in the middle. Um, the information that we're also given, not on your sheet, but here, the average or the uh, mean is 69.521. Uh, we're gonna call this 69.5 for our purposes. And the standard deviation is 2.987. And for today, we are going to just call that three. So these are the two numbers that we're going to use, the mean and the standard deviation. Okay, those are given to us. You can find them using uh, technology. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to find out um, the heights of people within one standard deviation and see what percentage of people that is. So within one standard deviation, that would be all the people three less than 69 and a half and three more than 69 and a half. That range would be from 66.5 to 72.5. Um, that is within one standard deviation. If this is the average and we had uh, one standard deviation that way and one standard deviation that way, they would be at the numbers 66.5 and 72.5. Uh, the number of people that are between those heights is 698. If we were to take our table of values and add those up for frequency, 698 people are between um, are within one standard deviation of the average. Uh, out of a total of a thousand, uh, that is times 100 for a percentage, that is 69.8% of people that are within one standard deviation. Um, if you wanted to sell to 70% of the population and you didn't have that much money to stock your store, maybe you buy only equipment that fits people within one standard deviation. Yes, you alienate 30% of the people, but you guarantee you have stuff for 70% of the people. If we look at two standard deviations, that would be six less than 69 and a half or six more than 69 and a half. That is values between 63.5 and 75.5 so we're going another step down and another step up to try to encompass more people uh, the number of people if we add them up from our frequency table between those numbers is 944 divided by a thousand people multiplied by 100 to get a percentage we get 94.4 percent of people you can't see that 94.4 percent of people are within two standard deviations of the average so if you wanted to stock your store for essentially 95% of the population, you'd be able to do that if you found equipment for people within two standard deviations of the average height of a snowboarder. You don't need to blow your budget on super tall, uh, equipment for people that are super tall or super short. Uh, you need to buy stuff for the average. And that's why, um, you know, mediums and mediums and larges are always gone from like the free t-shirts first and smalls and extra larges are always left because when people buy these shirts they do not account for the for the normal distribution that within two standard deviations you need to buy 95 percent of your shirts to give out uh, and only a few people are going to be extra small and extra large so don't get very many of those um, it's a lot of people they just end up disappointing more people when they're giving out free shirts because you only get a small one or a huge one uh, we've all been there Essentially, 95% of the population is within standard is within two standard deviations uh, in this case, and that's actually true for normal distributions. So this number, 94.4 or, or 95%, is true for normal distributions as a whole. Uh, let's see, I think there's a your turn next. Yes, what percent of all heights is within three standard deviations of a mean? So pause it here, do that, and come back and uh, I'll do it. Okay, so within three standard deviations of the mean, uh, that would be nine less than 69 and a half or nine more than 69 and a half. So that would be between 60.5 and 
and 78.5. And the number of people that are, it's actually way easier to count the number of people outside that range. There are three people outside that range, three outside that range, which means that there are 997 people inside that range. So if we take 997, oh, that's not good, 997 divided by 1,000, that's the number of people, and we multiply it by 100 to get a percentage. We get 99.7% of people within three standard deviations. And this is true for all normal distributions. If we go down and you check out your, yes, your um, page, you can see this whole thing. I can only show part of it for now. So example two. Jim raises sled dogs. He knows from the data that he's collected over the years that the weights uh, are normally distributed with a mean of 52 and a half and a standard deviation of 2.4 pounds. So he uses this information to sketch a curve. What percent of adult male dogs at Jim's kennel would you expect to have a weight between 46.7 and 54.9? Yes, so I can see all the information here. So uh, this curve that you can see is uh, with these percentages is true for all normal distributions. We're going to use that assumption. So when it says to draw it, um, they have actually drawn it here for us. Um, we can see that uh, within one standard deviation between, so our average is drawn at 52.5, and we go down 2.4 pounds to get to one standard deviation down or one standard deviation above. Uh, you can see that 68.68% 68 uh, 68 of people, or dogs, sorry, are within that group. And there's the most space under the curve in there. Uh, if you go one more over, it's 95%. And if you go one more over, it's 99.7%. You can see the tails have very small amounts of area underneath them, representing the three people that didn't fit with our um, snowboard equipment. So. Um, 46.7 is, oh, I should, this is incorrect. I'm going to change this on the fly. This should say 47.7. Delete. 47.7 and 54.9. Uh, 54.7 is one standard deviation below. 47.7, that's one standard deviation below the mean. And 54.9 is two standard deviations. I got this incorrect. This is two standard deviations below the mean. And 54.9 is one standard deviation above the mean. So that means that we are looking at an area uh, starting at 47.7 and going to 54.9. Um, between 54.9 and 50.1, we have 68%. So we can take that 68% and add what is half of what's, okay, what is half of what's left? Uh, we would add 13.5. Yes, because half of what's left, we would take 95 and minus 68. Find out what is uh, left on that portion and then divide it by two because we're only using the half portion of it. So 13.5%. Uh, that means that 81.5% of dogs are between that those ranges that it gave us, between 47.7 pounds and 54.9 pounds. Uh, your turn. Check out um, how many would between be between 50.1 and 59.7. So let's just draw our curve here. We can pause and do that, but now we're back. So let's draw our curve. And we had a mean. What was the mean we said was 52.5. One standard deviation below would be, what is it, 50.1. And we have 47.7 and 45.3. If we go the other way, let's draw this. We've got 54.9. We have 57.3 and 59.7. So our question asks between uh, 50.1 and 59.7 uh, pounds. So we know that this area right here is 68%. So it 
So this is 34% and this is 34%. So we're going to take those. We know that one of these sections is 13.5%. Um, the whole thing was 27%. Right? If we took what's here and we subtracted the 68, uh, we'd have 27%. And then we divide it by 2 to get 13.5. And, and then our next little bit uh, is what's in this tail. And in this portion, it's 2.35% that we have. So we would be adding those up. 34 plus 34 plus 13.5 plus 2.35, which gives us 83.85% of dogs being between the weights, 50.1 and 50.7 pounds. Um, what percent would you expect to have a weight less than 43.3 pounds? So that's less than this. That's less than three standard deviations. Uh, outside, we would expect 0.3% total. So that's on this side and on this side of the curve. So we divide that by two to get a total of 0.15% of dogs being less than 45.3 pounds. Let's see. I think we'll leave example four. You may have it, you may not uh, when you look at this, but we're not going to do this. I can do this in class if you have questions. Uh, thanks so much for watching, everyone. Um, we have some practice problems to do, and I will see you soon.